Well, folks, it's that time already. Time to talk about the last of the five cars in the Christmas update for Gran Turismo 7. We've left actually not the worst until last. One of the best, in fact, but still a car which will be maligned by a lot of people who probably won't even drive it. Where have I heard that kind of reasoning before? Almost like people who criticise channels even though they don't watch any of their videos. Sounds awfully familiar. The Ferrari Vision GT is actually a car which I think could turn you around on Vision GT cars because it's genuinely great and that's all there is to it here. End of review. But, <laughs> in all seriousness, there are players who haven't got the car yet. So for those of you who maybe are wondering how do you get this vehicle, I believe it was the 23rd, or it's due to be the 23rd of this month when you'll be able to just buy this car from the Ferrari dealer, presumably for about a million credits, same as all the other Vision GTs I would imagine. But for those of us who do already have it, we have it because of the 25th anniversary week, wherein there was a question in there that you had to answer and you got access to the car as soon as the update dropped. So put simply, that is the reasoning. But for everyone else, you can just buy it later on anyway. Now this Ferrari, I really do think is one of, honestly, the best VGTs we've ever had. And the problem with VGTs isn't so much that they're bad, it's that you can't really do much to change what they are in terms of actual tuning. So if you could take something like one of the worst examples for me, the Lamborghini, especially when you factor in how good it could be, given the brand behind it, well, you can't really change much about it, so you're stuck with what it is. Which means that if a Vision GT is great, then it stays great. But if it's bad, you can't make it better. And let's be honest, how many cars would you absolutely hate in this game if you weren't able to tune them? So it's not really fair to judge many of those cars when we can't do so, even though I myself will still continue to do so because Polyphony chose, for whatever reason, to not allow us to tune these cars very well. Which is odd given that many of them are racing vehicles and should be fully customizable. But that's by the by. This particular Ferrari, combining essentially Ferrari's forthcoming hypercar, which is going to be racing at Le Mans, with a more fictionalized kind of retro modern approach, very cyberpunk in its appearance, the back end is almost reminiscent of some of those super old, almost like Can-Am style Ferraris. I want to say it was like the 312P, something like that. It's probably the wrong model, but that one that we used to have in Forza for a while as a DLC car. Those machines with like an exposed back end, which looks really cool in racing, uh, Zonda R style. But in terms of performance, this thing is, put simply, an absolute monster. 1,363 horsepower. I mean, say what you will, that's a really good amount of power to be working with, and even with a hybrid system, and we'll come back to that in a second, because the hybrid system here is one of the main reasons why it's so good, it still only weighs 1,250 kilos. And I actually like that it weighs that much, because one of the things with these VGTs, and the Dodge Tomahawk is a perfect example of this, it does allow you to just go completely crazy. And if you so chose, well, Ferrari could have said, well, actually, this would weigh 500 kilos. <laughs> now, of course, no one would believe that, but there's nothing technically stopping you from doing so. I mean, again, look at the Dodge. The Dodge weighs, like, as much as a tea bag and has the power of a nuclear holocaust. But it can do that because it's a fictional car. It doesn't have to be realistic. And I will not hear anyone say otherwise that any real-world car is going to do 450 miles an hour on road-spec tyres, which is exactly what you can do with a Tomahawk in the game. Try putting comfort softs on it, it's a lot of fun. But this particular vehicle, they chose the more realistic approach. It has the extra battery weight, it has the weight of the mechanicals, the engineering, and I like that because, much like a Nissan GTR, which is one of the prime examples of a car being heavy for a reason, this is packed full of tech. It feels like the only thing that's here is everything that needs to be here. And boy can you feel it when you take it out on the track. The handling is so good. Some people probably won't like that this has a more all-wheel drive approach to its performance, but I mean, Le Mans cars have been like that for a while now with the hybrid systems over the front end, so I don't think it's that egregious. And it is a sign of Ferrari having technology that suits the time that it's in, which, if you think about it, is kind of what Ferrari's always done. Their cars have always been cutting edge, and even when they were primitive by today's standards, they were still great for the time. Something like a Ferrari F40, such an iconic, beloved car. It's basically a kit car by modern standards. There's nothing complex on it now, but back then it was about as close to a road-going race car as you could get. This feels like a modern interpretation of that kind of thinking. 
It also happens to have a very cool cockpit cam, and even though it doesn't quite sound as you would hope a Ferrari maybe would, a screaming V8 or a howling V12, you know, again, it's appropriate to the engine that it's got. So ultimately, I think that this is really a Vision GT that if you don't like Vision GTs, you should drive, because it's just a really good car. And because of the craziness that is the category system in this game, you can use it in road car races, <laughs> which is absolutely ridiculous, given that it's nearly a 1,000 point vehicle and has over 200 miles an hour potential, even without needing tuning. So the acceleration is ballistic, the handling is fantastic, and I'll tell you what, you put this thing up against something like the Lambo, or even others too, I would wager it could probably take on even something like the Jag SV which is an insanely powerful car in its own right, and this Ferrari could probably beat many of those other cars because it's more versatile. That is the key to why this is so good. Many Vision GTs tend to specialize in one thing. So you've got some that are really good for handling, some that are really good for straight line performance. This feels like, crazy as it sounds, the most realistic approach to making a Vision GT. It actually does feel like a 2035 race car. Like, it feels believable in that kind of way. I mean, think about what we're going to be doing a decade or two from now, and it probably isn't too far off this Ferrari. Maybe not visually, but hybrid systems with crazy power. I mean, why not? Because the reasons are different from back in the day. Back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, in those crazy qualifying trims where cars had 1,300 horsepower, it was mostly, what, for safety restrictions, reliability. They just couldn't run that kind of power safely and efficiently without blowing up. Now you can run stupid power out of hybrids and fully electric vehicles, so there's no real reason to believe that we wouldn't have cars with this kind of power, probably more than this, in 2030, 2035. So I think of all those future Ford Vision GT ideas, I actually quite like this one because it's probably going to happen in some form or another. But I would love to hear your thoughts on the Ferrari. Maybe did it convert you if you weren't a fan of these cars before? Maybe do you still not like them after driving it? Do you love the car, hate the car, or maybe somewhere in between? And of course, there are now officially only four days left until Christmas Eve, which is the end of my PS5 competition. I should think most of you know what that is by now, but for those who are maybe new to the channel and this is the first video you've watched, it's £2 to win a brand new PS5 plus free shipping anywhere in the world, and or, depending on the logistics, maybe me flying to the country and just giving you the PS5, because frankly I don't trust many shipping companies these days, so that of course is ending on Saturday, so stick around for that and for the winner being selected as well, and until next time we'll see you then, of course stick around on the channel as well for tune setups in the coming days, and for those of you who have enjoyed this month in terms of a combination of the cars released by Polyphony in the form of these, and the cars released by me earlier on in the month, in my Special Projects Pack 1, I can confirm all 10 vehicles in my Special Projects Pack 2 are coming out in January, and I have enough builds to do multiple more packs after that as well. Maybe even about another four or five. So definitely stick around for that in January. I will of course be releasing a new trailer, a new teaser for it, and it was great to see how much you guys enjoyed those tunes as well. So ultimately, that's it for my coverage in terms of reviews of this update. Stick around for more, and I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.